What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to try something a little different. We're going to make this vine vein growth kind of effect using geometry nodes. Looks super intimidating, but I promise you it's not that bad. Just bear with me and we'll have something pretty cool by the end of the video. The first thing you want to do is you want to start with a model that you want to apply the effect to. Um, I'm using this 3D scan that I got for free from a site called 3dscans.com. I'll leave a link to their site in the description. Just as a heads up, I had to remesh and decimate the head quite a bit to optimize it for my scene. Unless you have a really crazy strong computer, um, this type of thing might give your machine a little bit of trouble. So we just, we want to start with uh, not such a high amount of geometry right off the, the get go, because we're going to create a fair amount with the, the vein effect. So let's start low. But first, uh, import that model into your scene and then add a cube if there's not already one there. I'm looking at all of you who delete the default cube. But for right now, after you add your cube, make sure you hide your head model. Now highlight the cube and go to the modifier tab and click add modifier, then geometry nodes, and then hit new. Pop into your geometry nodes section. Now from your outliner, click and hold down to select the model you want to use and drag that into your geometry nodes workspace. Next, delete the group node input. From the node that was just created by your model, connect the geometry socket to the geometry socket of the group output node and you should see your model come back into the scene. Then hit Shift A and search for Edge Path to Curves. Drop that in between your model and group output node. If you drop it on the green line, it should automatically connect the nodes. The Edge Path to Curves node works in tandem with another node called Shortest Edge Paths. We're going to add it to our scene and place it below our current nodes. After you've done that, drag out the socket called Next Vertex Index from the Shortest Edge Path node to the Next Vertex Index socket on the Edge Paths to Curve node. At this point, we should see nothing on the screen, but what we're doing is telling Blender that we want to use the wireframe of our model to create animated curves along. Create a random value node and turn that into a boolean and connect the value socket to the start vertices socket of the edge paths to curve node. Let's unhide our head model in the outliner. Go into edit mode and select the vertex wherever you want your veins or vines to terminate. In the side menu, click into the data tab. It looks kind of like a green triangle, it's upside down. Hit the plus sign and then assign. Rename the group to something like EP or endpoint, just so you know what it is later. Now deselect your vertice and hit the select button while you're on your vertex group. It will re-highlight your vertice. We're just doing this to make sure that we have control of it. If your vertex group looks different than mine, don't panic. I already have a vertex group saved from my example, so that's why you're seeing endpoint and EP. Now go to object mode and highlight your cube in the outliner with the geometry nodes on it. From here, we can add a named attribute node. In this node, where it says name, click and select your vertex group you just created and drag the attribute socket to the end vertex of the shortest edge path node. You should see a wireframe appear, but it might be kind of off from the center of your model, so go back to the object info node and just click relative. Now we have these curves. They're not a true mesh right now, so they won't actually render, but the next couple of nodes we're going to add will turn them into something that's visible. Add a curve to mesh node between the edge paths to curves node and the group output node. In order to complete the function of this node, we have to add a curve circle node to the profile curve of the curve to mesh node. Everything is going to look real crazy right now, but don't panic. We just have to dial back the radius of our curve circle. I'm using 0 0.008. Also select the resolution and knock that down to about six. This looks cool, but I think we can make the curve seem more organic like our example. Let's add a set spline type node. Put that between the edge paths to curves node and the curve to mesh node. Click the drop down menu and select NURBS. There, looking better already. To continue making this look more organic, add a set curve radius node between the set spline type node and the curve to mesh node. This is going to make everything disappear and you should panic. Just kidding. Don't. Don't panic. We're going to add a spline parameter node and grab the factor socket and run it into the radius socket of the set curve radius node. You can see our mesh is back. To make the curves more pronounced, add a math node between the factor of the spline parameter and the radius of the set curve radius node. Add a trim curve node between the set curve radius node and the curve to mesh node to give ourselves the ability to animate this. And if you adjust the start number, you can see our vines or veins start to grow. 
Right click the start section and increase the value to one, which will make the lines disappear. Then right click and select insert keyframe. Go to the point in your timeline where you want the veins to be fully on. Change the start value to zero and right click and select insert keyframe again. If you scroll your timeline, your geometry node setup should be animated. To add a material, hit Shift A and create a set material node. Throw that in just before the group output node. From here, we can grab any materials that we've created in our material tab. A little tip, if your lines aren't as jagged or organic as you'd like, it could be because your wireframe is lacking detail. Two things you can try to combat this is you can add a triangulate modifier to your modifier stack of your model, as well as a decimate modifier with a lowered ratio. The combination of the two should create a more interesting pattern within your mesh, um, but it may not be needed. From here, it's all about textures and lighting. Those could be a video all on their own, but a brief overview is that I grabbed a rock texture from Ducky 3D's real-time materials and slapped that on my uh, Roman head model that I found. Then I created a red material with the roughness all the way down and assigned that to the geometry node set up for our veins or vines again, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then I pretty much just lit my scene with three uh, different spotlights. And that's about it. Well, I hope you guys found this video useful. This is a pretty basic geometry node setup that has a lot of power to do some really crazy things with it. If you guys have any ideas on what you wanna see next, as always, please let me know in the comments. And if you're having any trouble, pop that down there too. I uh, hope to see you guys next time. Thanks.